Welcome to After Hours Engineering. I'm Will Cleveland. This is my channel where I'm going to talk about FPGAs and neuromorphic engineering. The neuromorphic will come much, much later on, but for now, I'd like to cover FPGAs and more specifically, soft core CPUs on FPGAs. Uh, but first, who am I? Um, well, I started out in electronics as a technician in the early 80s, working on TVs and some marine radios for a bit of a stint. And, uh, but surprise, that's where I learned about the TMS 9900 that was in the TI-99 color computer back then. Had no idea they were in marine radios. Uh, from there, I, I was attending tech school and eventually I graduated and in the late 80s I worked on military computers for a contracting facility uh, in South Florida. Eventually I got laid off and decided to take the money that I had saved and go back to finish my engineering degree and I ended up doing a, a double E and a computer engineering degree um, because at the time job offerings were a little bit weak uh, but eventually I graduated and uh, ironically got my first job as working in Unix um, and then doing nighttime PC repair and things. Uh, today I'm researching and studying after hours neuromorphic engineering and uh, that is what led me into FPGAs because I was hoping that FPGAs could uh, mimic neurons, at least digital neurons. Um, and they can, but they're really not suited for it any more than a GPU is any more, uh, suited for doing machine learning. Um, so that's where I am today, doing uh, neuromorphic engineering uh, after hours. So what is this series about? What is it not about? Well, we're definitely going to be building uh, up front a soft core CPU. It's a very small, simple CPU, 16 bits, with uh, very few instructions. I've, I've tried to keep it simple so that uh, you can understand it. It's The series is styled similar to Ben Eater's uh, series where I try to break things down into small parts. We'll go over some Verilog, and I'm somewhat of a newbie ish uh, to Verilog as well, um, but I'd like to, you know, go over it with you and maybe share some of the things that I've learned along the way, some of the do's and don'ts, if you will. Um, the course isn't extensive on any specific HDL, but it is going to be covering Verilog, and I might do an additional set of series on another HDL, perhaps Silas. Um, is one that I've been watching lately. But this series, above and beyond all, is about having fun and learning uh, how to make soft core CPUs uh, in FPGAs. So I'd like to welcome you to my channel, and if you find anything interesting, if you have any questions or comments, you know, obviously leave them below in the comments. And uh, as usual, hit a like button or even subscribe if you really are finding this um, great. So from there, uh, let's talk about the very first things that we're going to cover to get this series started. So let's take a look at some diagrams and some cook, uh, some uh, a layout, uh, uh, an agenda, and we'll take it from there. So here we are. We know our goal is to put a soft core processor on an FPGA and hopefully have some blinking lights that come out the other end. What is that though? That's typically built out of individual components, uh, modules. And some of them for our simplistic processor is just going to have a control matrix or some control mechanism, some memory, a register file for scratch work, a bunch of registers to help move data around synchronously, some MUXs to help route them, uh, the actual data paths themselves, and of course the arithmetic logic unit. This is the basic core set of modules that you would need to build a 
softcore processor. Certainly there are more things you could add to this for more complex processors like memory management units, buses, protocols like I2C serial protocols, um, any number of things can go into a processor, I.O., you name it. But for us, we're going to stick just with this minimal set right here. The question is, is like, well, what tools do we have available for us? If you're in a company, that would typically be some sort of proprietary tool that has been supplied to you based on the chipsets that the man, uh, company has chosen. But for us, we're going to be using an open source solution that's provided by Yosis. And they created a tool chain that works with a fair amount of chipsets out there, most noticeably the Lattice ICE40 series and the Lattice ECP series. Now you could go to GitHub and download all the source code, and if you know what you're doing, go through all the dependencies and compile it yourself. Or you can do it the easy way, which is to use APIO. And that's the way we're going to do it. Now the question is that what is the workflow? What are we going to be using? So we'll come over here and we'll take a look at Yosis. Yosis provides a typical workflow where you will take your design files, they'll go through a workflow, and out pops a bitstream. That's great, but where are we going to put these things on? Well, that's where the hardware comes in. In our case, for this video series, I'm going to be using Foconology's Black Ice MX and Luke Valenti's Tiny FPGA, specifically the B2 version. Once we have created our bitstream, we upload it to our FPGA, we can connect up some LEDs and watch our CPU do its thing. That's our goal. That's what we're going to try to do in this series. So the first thing you want to do is certainly install APIO. So if you click on the link or you come out here to FPGA Wars, most likely have Python and you'll need to install pip, almost certainly you have that too. Then just run the the pip install program. This will install APIO. Most likely you'll get most of the items on this list. What you'll need to do extra is install ICE40 or your ECP5. We're going to be using the ICE40, so I ran the install for the ICE40. That gives me my place and route tool and configuration tools specific for the chipsets that we're using. Now that we have our tool chain installed, we're now ready to start writing our design, and in our case, we're going to use Verilog. Verilog is getting kind of old. I mean, it's coming up on a half a century. But that's kind of good because there's a lot of material out there. Some of it's a little old, but a lot of it is up to date. But not only that, there are websites with modules, libraries, projects, blogs, um, gotcha articles, ML, audio, the list is really long. There are also a lot of books out there in Verilog and this is the list that I currently have. I'll put a link out on the website uh, on the down below so that you can see it. So what is a m slightly more in-depth version of the workflow up here? Well certainly again we're going to write in Verilog. Eventually we're going to want to synthesize after we've probably run some simulations. Then we'll want to run the place and route, which is going to really ask about the device that you have and do very specific workflows in order to generate the bit streams that eventually will output onto your FPGA. So we'll go a little bit deeper. Here's some Verilog. This is our HDL section where all of our dreams and hopes live. We'll eventually have valid Verilog. We'll run some simulations. You can look at it either with a visualization tool like GTK Wave, and in addition, you can uh, do the old-fashioned writing to the console. And then once you're satisfied with that, you'll run the um, synthesis and implementation tools like Yosis, NextPNR, and IcePack. That will generate an actual bitstream that is ready for the final process, which is to upload it onto your FPGA. That's what it is in a nutshell. These four steps we're going to go through. Well, there you have it. We're going on a journey to build a soft core processor and have a little bit of fun while doing it. So what's next? Well, 
we're going to build a simple project to simulate a key component of the register. It requires us to build a Verilog module, then a test bench, create a make file to drive the tool chain, simulate it, then synthesize it, and finally upload it to an FPGA. That's it. Nothing complex. We're keeping it simple. We're done. And that's where we'll wrap things up. I hope I've encouraged you to follow along on this engineering journey. So, until next time, peace.